been um, from truthful tiring, a lot of travelling. I've been to Australia and back, and a um, few days at home in Glasgow, then off to Cardiff, and then across to Wembley. And um, you know, we've got two day preparation going into Dynamo Moscow. So it's been a hectic month, but it's enjoyable. The players have showed a fantastic application to the job, and um, some decent performances throughout pre season. But um, you know, the the real work starts with Champions League qualifiers, and uh, we're looking forward to it. You must be impressed by the way the players have, have listened to your methods and the way they've reacted um, to you coming in. I think from day one I could sense that they were a, a very focused group of individuals really. Playing for this club you must be professional anyway. I think you are role models. I think they understand the expectations of the support that they must um, you know, do their jobs week in week out and, and, and from day one I've sensed that and, and so their capacity to take on information has been good. Um, I'd like to think when I watch the team play that there's lots of the traits that I want to see in the team are, are there from day one and um, you know we've enjoyed it so far but as I say we, we very fully understand that we'll get judged on competitive games in, in, in SPL competition and in Champions League competition so um, whilst we've enjoyed some of the pre-season games you know, the, the real business begins. It's fitting maybe that your first competitive game in charge of the club at, at Celtic Park is a European tie. The first time I'd ever watched Celtic play I think was um, was the, the midweek before I signed for them, that was a European tie as well, that was against Neuchatel Zamax in the second leg which then won the game but went out of the tie so you know European football is, uh, I could see how important it was to the, it was to the supporters that night and um, it was really the atmosphere in the crowd that persuaded me to sign for the football club and um, here I am now going into, a, into a, a game as a manager and hopefully there'll be a a good attendance, a passionate support, which will help the team get a right result. Was the prospect of European football uh, a big factor in you coming back to the club as a manager, Tony? Well, if I'm honest, not really. I think it, the draw of the club itself is enough, I think. The draw of knowing what this club's about, knowing the expectation, knowing the supporters and, and the passion that it carries around the world is, um, was enough. I didn't sit at home and think, well, we could go and play in Europe and, and do this and do that. I think, it's, I think as a coach, again, it's part of my education, I'd like to think. I'm only five years into to my managerial career and I think the, the, uh, the experience of playing in Europe will hopefully stand me in good stead for what I'd like to think is, is going to be the next 15 years or so. And um, So I'm looking forward to the challenge of it, the different types of teams, the different uh, cultures that you play against, the different formations you play against. Um, but really I'm here to try and make, successful, make a success of the job, to win trophies, to, to give the supporters a team that they can be proud of and, and, and follow the traditions of the club. Three big signings so far, Tony. Mark Antoine Fortuny was the first one. It was obviously important for you to bring him in, having known him at West Brom. It was a big decision to bring Mark in, basically, because I, I know he's not free-flowing regarding scoring goals. I, you know, I, I couldn't sit here now and think he's going to score 30 goals this season. I think he'd score his fair share of goals because he's technically very gifted as well, but uh, I think his main strength is, is, is as a team player, the work he puts in, his ability to hold the ball up for the team, allow our attacking midfield players to get past him and join. Um, it was just a cog in the team really, I think, and yet once you've bought a footballer, I don't ever sit there and think, well, he cost me this much and there's a lot of pressure on He's just another footballer for me and, and, and as we go through pre-season there's Chris Killen who cost this club nothing and scored four goals in three games and um, has shown he can do the job in, in the team in the way we set it up and so um, it doesn't matter to me whether they cost three million or they cost nothing, you know, it's about what's going to benefit the team at the right time against the right opposition and uh, I, I'm just trying to put cogs in place really, trying to make sure the squad is stronger in all areas and, and create competition within the squad. Do you feel that you might need to bring in more players for the end of transfer window, Tony? Well, I, I, I feel as if I need to try and get the balance of the squad properly. I, you know, again, I'm not a sort of guy who stands there and stamps his feet. If I'm told there's no money, I can't do anything. What I, what I would do is look at the squad, see where we're overloaded in a certain type of place, see if we can get some funds in by moving some out to bring some in and, and just try and get the balance of the squad right. I think the players over the last month have shown that they are more than capable of competing at a high level against some pretty good opposition, you know, against Tottenham Hotspur at Wembley Stadium with some young players in the team, they showed that they're not far away from competing and against the champions of Africa they, you know, they more than give a good account of themselves and so, you know, it's not as if I'm sitting here majorly concerned, we're desperate for more players but again, 
I like to add quality when it comes available and, uh, and if I can do that continually improve things, continually add to what we've got, making things better. Now things drop off the bottom because they're not quite ready or they don't fit in or I don't see a place for them in the squad and they move on and something comes in at the other end and the squad just keeps moving on and hopefully improving. Gary Caldwell entering the final year of his contract, how important is it to secure him on a longer deal? I'd like to secure Gary Caldwell on a longer deal, I think he is proven over the last year or two his his, uh, his qualities and his uh, you know, not just his footballing qualities but his, his strength of character he's uh, he's a leader on the field he um, he brings lots of qualities to the football team and you know again no coach is in a rush to lose those sort of qualities so I personally would like to um, you know to try and secure Gary's future but I understand as well that there's there's um, an ongoing negotiation really there's there's um, something that needs resolving one way or the other and if it doesn't get resolved then Gary um, you know, will see his future elsewhere somewhere down the line when his contract expires if, if it's allowed to expire then, then we have to deal with that but you know, my, my own view and my own personal side of it I would like to uh, secure Gary Caldwell on a longer deal but um, you know, we wait and see it's, there's, there's not just one person involved in that there's, there's four or five different people that all have to agree with things and, and these things are, are long ongoing things sometimes. There's been a fair amount of debate over the captaincy. I think you're of the impression that you've got a number of captains in your team. Steve McManus is not fit and available at the moment who is the club captain and you know from my own personal point of view I don't, I don't see any reason why we would want to change the club captain because when I've met Stephen and spoken to him he seems a very honourable man, a very um, respectable guy, you know, a, a good footballer obviously, he's a, he's a Scottish international, he's, uh, you know, I don't see any need, if, if I thought there was a need, an urgent need to change that because didn't, I didn't see the, the human qualities in him, then, then I would do that, but uh, I don't see any immediate need to change that. Regarding on the field captain, you know, I've, I've had a look at a few, Scott McDonald captain them in Australia and Darren O'Day captain them at Wembley, Gary Caldwell captain them in the first game. I've got a very open mind on it, but it's good for me that there's, there are individuals throughout the team that can lead the team. And that's testament to the professionalism of the previous regime, the management team and the, the legacy that they, that they have left you, because I think you've maybe been pleasantly surprised by the depth of quality in the sport. Yeah, and, and their application and their attitude to training has been first class. Um, you know, I, 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 from afar, watched with, with great pleasure to see you know, Gordon winning three championships on the on the trot and doing so well in the Champions League and you know picking up trophies along the way and I think it's uh, I've only got praise and, and, and uh, admiration for what he achieved at this football club um, you know I've, I've got to try and pick up the reins and, and, and move it forward in, in, in my own beliefs and my own philosophies and um, um, you know we'll wait and see how, how successful we can be, do, be doing